Hi, this is Amir Khan, and you'll catch me on Sit with Hitlist. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to the first edition of Sit with Hitlist. Now, uh, it's very simple. We'll be having a conversation. Sure. At some point, we'll go to the audience. Mm. We'll continue the conversation. Mm. We'll talk about you as an actor. We'll talk about you as a producer. Mm. As an actor, of course, we see you once in a year. Yeah. But off late, mm. we've been seeing a lot more of you. There's one video, for instance, that went viral. I don't know which one. There was one where you do Shahiri, and this is from an ad. That How's that supposed to be a flip card ad that never released? No, no, it released. It, it didn't release on yeah, TV yeah, yeah. because we only saw it on video. And no, it's it fantastic. Released. Because have you guys seen the Shahiri that he does uh, in that thing that went viral? That the other one mm. is uh, where you're trying to buy ice cream. Oh, yes, I had just gone to Turkey. Yeah. Right, right. Can we? Can do you have it yeah. with you? I've, I've seen that. You've seen that? Yeah, yeah. I, I want the audience to see it. If they can take a look. They have not seen it already. Have you guys seen the one? Yeah, yeah, where yeah. She, yeah. What is the story behind that? Well, I was in Turkey and and uh, I knew about this ice cream trick that hmm. they do over there. It's very popular. Hmm. So I had seen it. You know, similar viral videos of it. So I was very keen to try my hand at trying to grab the ice cream. Huh. I thought I would be able to grab it. But I wasn't able to. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you an interesting story, Amir. This is from uh, Christmas two years ago. Okay, mm-hmm. I was going to Istanbul, mm. and I just happened to tweet mm. something to the effect of that I'm going to be there for Christmas. Mm. And someone wrote back to me mm. on Twitter. Mm. This girl, very young girl, mm. college perhaps or post college, mm. and she said, "Hey, you're going to be in Istanbul. Great! I'm going to show you around. It's a great place. Mm. Everything else." And we got chatting for like a whole week. Mm. We were on Twitter chatting and. Uh, and she insisted that you know she'll come and pick me up from the airport. Okay. I'm like, wow, thank you. Mm. That'd be lovely. Mm. Except when I landed, mm. one there was no way because my phone wasn't working, so mm. I couldn't get in touch with her. Mm. And then I finally see her, just like pure luck that mm. I actually saw her at the airport. At it's the a pretty airport. massive airport. Uh-huh. And uh, it's when I met her that I realized that she doesn't know a word of English. Oh, okay. She obviously doesn't know any Hindi. Huh, huh, huh. But anyway, so we we got to the airport. Then she took me around uh, the Asian side of Istanbul and mm, met her mm, friends mm, and everything. Mm. And in India, right, we mm. keep discussing who is the biggest star. Mm-hmm. Like, is it Amir Khan, Shah Rukh Khan, Salman Khan, Amitabh Bachchan, mm-hmm. Rajni Khan, right? Mm-hmm. The East, the Asian side of Istanbul, there is no doubt. They have not heard of anything mm. outside Amir Khan. I had oh. no idea. Oh. I had absolutely no clue. Hmm. Did you have an idea about this startup? They have not heard of uh, Brad Pitt. They have not heard of DiCaprio. <laughs> they only know Amir Khan. Well, you know, uh, I, I d- didn't know about this until uh, some years ago, when uh, when I started getting a lot of uh, emails and uh, on my Twitter and Facebook, you know, a lot of people from Turkey were, began writing to me, and that kind of you know it, it stood out. Hmm. The amount of messages I was getting from Turkey really made me realize that there are a lot of fans of mine in Turkey, which I was not earlier aware of. Like these are people I was talking to throughout hmm. that week hmm. on Google Translate, hmm, hmm, hmm. but they knew all Amir Khan movies. Yeah, songs. yeah. No, and uh, so it it was it came as a surprise to me. I had no idea, and you know I was very pre- pleasantly surprised to know that uh, the, the audience in Turkey really loves my work and they've seen the films. Though my films had not released there actually. Hmm. So I'm assuming that uh, you know they must have found the films on internet and seen the films. Uh, so uh, so I was really thrilled actually. No, but I how does really it work? Th- like like you know obviously there have been like the typical Bollywood fans across mm. the world, right? Mm. And these are the song and dance kind of fans mm. who think our movies are really just about that. Mm. You know, I mean it's almost racist to a point where mm. I mean there is far more to Indian cinema, certainly sure. far more to Hindi films mm. than just uh, Zumba classes, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, but these are like hardcore film buffs, yeah. Yeah. Like, how do they, how do they connect? According to you, how do they connect so much that you are the biggest star there? I, I, you know, it's it's such a difficult question to answer because I don't know. Right. I don't know the answer. I'm assuming that they would have seen some film of mine and then that must have gone viral. They would have told each other. That's how like it would have begun. Like huge. Yeah, huge, yeah, I believe so. Right. So there's something similar happened in China actually hmm. because China uh, we had not released. As far as my memory goes, I don't remember any film of mine releasing there. And then suddenly, Didn't after three, three idiots released in China, eventually, okay. eventually. Okay. So, so but first, what happened is that Three Idiots became a huge hit on the internet hmm. in China. Hmm. And I got to know, and Raju and Vinod got to know that it's become a like a roaring hit in China. All the kids have seen the film hmm. on their phones, on their laptops, and all of that. 
and that's when uh, you know i think somebody from china contacted uh, vinod or raju and right. they released the film but they released the film one year later by which time everyone had seen it mm. and it still did some 20 crores or something in china uh, and and actually that's when i got to know that you know so three idiots was the reason why uh kind of my films became popular in china because when they saw three it is and they began looking for my other films and they started watching my other films and they've seen dare zami par they've seen lagan they've seen rang de basanti dil chahta hai so they've but seen dangal is something else na dangal is something else i mean else. what kind of numbers mm. like uh, i mean of course we read the numbers mm. uh, on the press but you would know exactly how much it made what what but was that it, figure it did some 1300 odd crore which is about three times india right so <laughs> so uh, i mean i was really taken aback because actually before the release the distributor told me that according to me whatever business you do in india mm. we, we will probably do more than that in china you already knew that he he predicted that right and i did not believe him right. so i was laughing at him i said how is that possible you know it's an indian film it's made for an indian audience and it, it, if hopefully it will do well here is difficult to imagine that in another country it will do more than that you know right so i really didn't believe him but uh, it did three times the business here so you know earlier in the month we had this uh, jagran cinema summit mm. that you couldn't make it for mm-hmm. and we were having a conversation on dangal mm. okay on what led to dangal and this sort of mm. phenomenal success in china mm. and one of the theories that siddharth roy kapoor came up with mm. in a panel discussion mm. was that the chinese people mm. saw in the father daughter relationship mm. a very eastern sensibility mm-hmm. they could identify with it yeah. do you agree with that i do uh so both turkey and china because mm. i have visited both the countries mm. i realized that their emotional key is very similar to ours and which is why they connect very strongly to stories that you know that we connect to but their movies are very different from ours huh? uh possibly mm. but i'm saying as 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 uh, human beings their emotional key is very similar to ours mm. so uh the reaction that dangal got in the theater was identical to an indian audience reacting they laugh at the same places they cry at the same places they clap at the same places wow. it's identical there's no difference at all which is not true if indians watch chinese movies i mean i don't know if i get that sensibility at all um no i saw crouching tiger and i loved it I but really actually, loved really it. Yeah, i was clapping and whistling and all that i too loved it like you saw it like an akshay kumar movie uh no i didn't see it as an akshay kumar movie i just saw it as a movie i mean i yeah. didn't, had a, i didn't have any preconceived notions um i've seen jackie chan's films hmm that's hong kong i though, i right? yeah but he's a huge star yeah, in china yeah, yeah. uh so i remember i was i think in college when i first saw police story hmm and i was like wow what is this here such a fab film you know so entertaining this unbelievable action and it is so humorous here. Right. you know jackie chan is so amazing in humor so i i mean i connected with those films so know, as another much. theory uh, amir and there's a person theory mm. please uh, contest me mm. on this is that the way the kids are treated mm. in dangal right mm. and then there is a father who's determined to turn those kids into champions mm. is very similar to how kids in china are treated except the father mm. is the state Hmm. and the state comes and takes those kids to turn them into olympic champions do you see do you see a connection there uh no i didn't think of it that way i didn't think of it that way i think uh, what people in china have connected is to the personal i don't think that they have connected to this aspect i think they have connected on a very personal level um because i've read of the reactions uh, of the chinese audience hmm. also and a lot of them have written saying that you know they uh, saw the film and they felt like talking to their parents and parents saw the film you know with, with their kids and so it, it's a it is the it's human connect right. i think so basically you're saying is uh, the spread happened through internet right mm. to start with it, during 3 years right during three i years. i would imagine it's around the same time that it happened both in turkey and china that's what my guess is mm. that 3 years as a film traveled internationally virally hmm. you know even places where it had not released and that resulted in a certain audience getting exposed to indian cinema to my work then they began looking for other films of mine on the net and found it and so given how strong or big a role internet has played hmm. in your case in hmm. terms of 
building a new fan base altogether. Sure. Right? A whole new following. Sure. In completely uncharted territories. Mm. I find it really odd, Amir, mm. and I saw this. In, I saw you saying that mm. in interview that. You're such a big screen guy mm. that you would never do. For instance, you might bypass something like a Netflix mm. if you were to do a web series because you just love the popcorn, massive, big screen entertainment. No, no, not at all. as an experience. Not at all. I, I would be happy to, um, you know, be part of other platforms. Mm. That's that's. That's not what you meant when no. you said big screen is what. No, no, big screen is certainly a very unique experience. Mm. But that doesn't mean that I would not want to do a net Netflix series or a you know or a. A television series. Have you been offered? Um, no, I've been asked by Netflix and Amazon and other companies that why don't I make one for them? Mm. I've been asked that. Uh, so when I do come up with something, I'd love to. Uh, I think each platform is different. So I think that uh, Netflix as a platform is ideal for content which cannot be told in one in you know in one session and needs a uh, episodic narrative. Right. Uh, so when I come across content which is like that, I mean, I've watched, for example, uh, uh, Breaking Bad. It's mm. one of my favorite series, Breaking Bad. And, you know, I really loved it. So uh, any others that you love? I like Game of Thrones. I like House of Cards. Uh, Breaking Bad is my favorite. Uh, so, so uh, I'm not averse to that platform right. at all. Right. Not at all. I, I mean, cinema is uh, definitely for me more exciting as an audience I'm saying not as mm. a creative person because I'm in there and there's a huge screen there's you know atmos sound and you know mm. you get completely sucked into it that has a different experience a much larger experience than watching it on my laptop right. you know, there's, there's you can't compare the two but in terms of content you can compare actually because the content is equally good mm. the content is equally good what are the central uh, themes mm. of uh, Secret Superstar mm. your latest film is is actually internet at some mm, level, mm, mm. and about how you can become an overnight star, mm, mm, right? Mm, yeah. You could be a kid, you could just play the guitar mm. and it just flies, mm. right? Which is really what at some level cinema is also competing with, mm, mm, because that's also stardom mm. in its own way, right? Cinema is competing with means how? It's the same eyeballs. Now, when you look at, for instance, your daughter and what she consumes, mm -hmm. or your son, watch what he consumes, the kind of people who are his icons or her icons mm -hmm. would be much larger variety sure. uh, than, say, what we had when we were growing up. Sure. Right? Uh, how do you compare that stardom to how it is now? It's almost overnight. You also think they also die overnight also at some level? Like any video can go viral, right? See, Any one can so be it like depends. A, I mean, you know, there are some videos that go viral which are just one-offs. Hmm. You might find a video of a cat which does something really funny going viral and yeah. everyone has seen that and that cat becomes really popular. So those are one-offs. And hmm. then there are people who have a certain talent which you suddenly discover and then you want to watch more of that. So it's, it's both kinds. It's both kinds. And uh, I personally feel that it's a, it's a great opportunity. Uh, internet has offered that great opportunity to people like in the film she's a girl from a small yeah. town she doesn't have access to mumbai and delhi and big cities so uh, and she's full of this you know passion for what she is doing and she wants to show the world you know she wants to share uh, with the world and so internet becomes a great means to do that uh, so now you don't have to be part of a uh, select group of people who have access to distribution and filmmaking right. Right. and all of that How is because that is difficult to break into but here you don't have to break into anything you've uh, with internet you can actually make what you want put it out there you have a distribution network you know right. and if if people like what you're doing it start traveling you know, it's how is it different so in your time Amir in the 90s in, in particular because now it's very easy for us to tell because everyone knows the opening collections of mm. movies for some reason mm. and so they pit one against the other okay mm. this movie did 21 crore the other one did 23 crore mm -hmm. how would you tell someone is a star back then when actually there wasn't so much knowledge about box office figures to to start with no there was there was huh this there much was. yeah yeah uh, it wasn't reported so widely by the mainstream entertainment media mm. it was reported more by the trade Right. magazines but uh, because I come from a film family so I know that from the you know from me being whatever seven eight years old I remember the reading the trade guide film information mm. uh, my dad's films would release so we would check the figures 
एंड इट गिव्स यू यू नो territory wise to patna mein kitna hua hai but that's what the industry would obviously know those are b2b magazines for people correct. within correct. so i'm saying that that so within the film industry uh, when a film would release the film industry would want to know what are the collections right. you know right. uh, actors right. directors producers would want to know so that's a th- something that's been going on i guess since cinema has been around sure. as a business right and at that time only the trade magazines were actually reporting these figures hmm. <clears throat> Uh, so if you look at Mughal Azam as a film, hmm. the audience would not know what business it did, but the trade would know. Right. The trade magazines would report it, which would not actually get picked up by entertainment media. Hmm. But today, entertainment media is picking it up. Now hmm. that's a choice that the media is taking. I don't think the industry was always doing this. Right. Right. It's like, like something new. That so, the like for instance, for a lay public hmm. in a random town, hmm. uh, obviously not having read Trade Guide or whatever else hmm. uh, that existed for hmm. the business itself. I mean, one theory was that if people start copying your haircut, hmm. then you're a star, huh? Because uh, they never change the haircut also ever in their movies. See, for me, up until Dil Chahta Hai, two thousand one. Yeah, see, Isn't there are true? there are many yardsticks for measuring stardom. One, of course, is copying styles. I remember hmm. when Mr. Bachchan uh, came in and you know really uh, became a huge star for all of us. I would love to, you know, get bell bottoms made like him, and you know. Uh, Uh, and uh, so all of us would do all of that so that's one yardstick of you know measuring how popular a star right. is when you start copying his or her style mm. uh but for me actually the biggest yardstick is how many seats do you fill right you know when your film releases how many seats do you fill is uh, for me the most important yardstick because i've loved you i've loved your work and now i want to experience it i want to experience it Uh, experience the next one. You I'm not just copying your hairstyle. Hmm. I want to experience what you've done. You know, uh, and uh, so for me, that is a very important yardstick. Uh, and often we also measure a, the stardom of a star by his big successes. I think that's a faulty method, because PK's huge business or Dangal's huge business is not because of me. It's because the film is good. It's because Raju has written a great script. Nitesh has written a great script. They made a great film, and that is why the film has done the kind of business it has done. Mm. So it is uh, incorrect to assume that it, that's my stardom which is causing the film to go so big. My stardom will come into play when I make a bad film and it does that much business. Right? कि फिल्म बुरी है हमको देखना नहीं है लेकिन आमिर के वजह से हम देख रहे हैं. That is stardom. So if you want to actually measure the stardom of an actor, you should see how much his flop does. कि यार ये फिल्म लोगों को पसंद नहीं आई उसने इतना धंधा किया नाउ यू कम टू नो कि इसका स्टार्टअप कितना है राइट इट इज द फ्लॉप्स ऑफ एन एक्टर सो इन दैट सेंस व्हिच एक्चुअली हेल्प्स यू मेजर व्हाट द स्टार्टअप इज इन दैट सेंस आई थिंक द बिग स्टोरी हैज ऑलवेज बीन फॉर द पास्ट 25 इयर्स दैट देयर इज आमिर खान शाहरुख खान सलमान खान एंड दे हैव डोमिनेटेड दैट स्पेस इन टर्म्स ऑफ फिल्म आई है तो लोग देखने जाएंगे देयर हैज बीन दैट बेसिक नंबर व्हिच हैज बीन a huge number to begin with mm-hmm. a captive audience mm-hmm. uh, should i call it mm-hmm. my question to you is do you remember the first time you met salman and sharukh and obviously at that time you didn't know that 25 years down the line yeah i remember i remember the first Rados. i remember the first time i met salman um uh, in my memory the first time i met him is when i was uh, um at babla's house Aditya Bhattacharya hmm. and who made us, rock who made rock right and both of us uh, live in Bandra you know uh, S- Salman and me hmm. incidentally Salman and me were in the same school in the same class for one year <laughs> where which school St Anne's okay on Pali Hill huh. uh, this we discovered when we were t- talking you know I said which year were you in St Anne's and he said I was in there and this year I said I was in the same year so you guys were in the same so class we didn't know each other in the second standard okay in the second standard ha huh. uh and then he moved on to some other school and i was i remained there uh but i don't have no memory of, i have no memory of that <laughs> did he get kicked out of school because he didn't no, get no no i don't no? remember okay don't maybe that was later <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember that so uh so my first memory of having met him was in babla's house when uh, i was actually babla wanted to do a short film and he needed help to you know make the film and so i was very close to him at that time and he wanted me to help him so i was his 
spot boy, production manager, first AD, actor, everything rolled into one. Hmm. He shot that film for about a month, uh, you know, in, this is much before, this is the first time I ever acted. Okay. Subha Subha. Is no, no, Subha Subha. But that was the uh, Subha FDI. Subha was FTI and that was later. Okay. Subha oh, Subha was even before that? Even, even before that. Wow. It's even How old were you? 15. Hmm. I was 15. Uh, and uh, Subha Subha happened later on when I was in junior college. Hmm. So this actually was after my 10th standard in the, in the holidays <coughs> is when we shot this film. Hmm. And I remember I was at Babla's house and he was cycling around somewhere on Carter Road or something. Hmm. And he, I think, probably knew Babla also, I don't know. And he dropped in and we were standing in the balcony and talking. Hmm. And he was uh, saying that, I, you know, I also want to become an actor. And he was talking about his... Hmm. Uh, so, if I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure I met him in Babla's balcony. It I, either was during the time of Paranoia, which is the short film hmm. was called Paranoia. Or it was when we were shooting Rakh, one of the two. Hmm. Because it was in Babla's house and I was shooting and he had dropped in. Uh, so that is the first time I remember meeting him. What did, do you remember what you thought of him? Mm, he was a sweet chap. I mean, hmm. he was a sweet guy and we were talking and all of that. And he said, I also tried to act. And I said, cool. Uh, I don't have any more memory of that than that. Yeah. And Shah Rukh? Shah Rukh, I remember meeting him for the first time. I think I was shooting with Juhi somewhere and he, we were shooting on the road I think and he uh, had begun shooting a film with her, uh, his films had not released yet, hmm. Diwana had not, Diwana was his first was film, his first so it had yeah. not released yet but she had told me there's a young actor who's very good, I'm working with him. For and, Raju Bangeja, uh, I think she was shooting for Raju Bangeja right. and I think we were, if I remember correctly, shooting for Hamer IPR. Hmm. Uh, or something like that and and that's when I met him very briefly uh, the first time yeah. no memories like nothing uh, special uh, no he I mean he was very sweet and we met warmly and, uh, that's it yeah no no like it wasn't like a long meeting or something.